Ladies and gentlemen, Hans Niemann has done it again. Hans is currently playing in a chess tournament in London called the London Chess Classic. It's an annual tournament where they organize many of the world's strongest players. In the past, they've had Magnus and Hikaru. This year, they have players like Hans, Gukesh, and so on. And um, this is his round four game. And in this game, Hans Niemann played a spectacular attacking chess game where he sacrificed not one, but both of his chess god-given rooks and on top of that, he sacrificed a knight. It was a sensational performance. It was a high-level game. I'm going to break it down for all of you uh, and hopefully make you care about the spectacle. The London Chess Classic this year matters because players like Gukesh are trying to make the candidates tournament. So a certain level of performance at the London Chess Classic will help him achieve that or not. Also, it's my birthday. Uh, not that you had to know that, but Lucy just got me this nice sweater. So I'm wearing it in the video. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a colorful dude. Uh, I like, uh, you know, I like to yell about rooks, but I also, I like to wear colorful sweaters and, uh, yeah, the New York dress code is basically black, gray and anything else. Uh, but sometimes I, I, I do like to wear, you know, some more colorful and comfortable stuff. Anyway, uh, sit back, relax. I'm a little bit under the weather. My throat hurts. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, have a great December 5th. Hans opens this game with the move e4, and his opponent is uh, Shreyas, who I, I always call his opponent Shreyas Royale, like Battle Royale in Fortnite, but I think it's just Shreyas Royal. I, I, I don't think his name is pronounced Royale. He's a young international master from England, and uh, he's, um, he's 14 years old. So, you know, if you think Hans is young at, at the age of 19 or 20, I mean, Shreyas is very, very young, and he's playing in this tournament because he's the future of English chess. Hans plays knight f3, we have an e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, this is the Italian. Hans can also play bishop b5, which is the Spanish. The Italian and the Spanish are the two main lines. Generally, at top level, you don't see Ponziani, four knights. Uh, you don't see the Vienna because there, there's a lot of equalizing lines for black. That doesn't mean the Vienna's bad at, you know, let's say 2,000 or 1,800 or 1,500 level. You, you just gotta know your lines there. Uh, and so the Italian's one of the ways to play for an advantage. Black plays bishop c5, mirror image we don't have knight f6 which could potentially invite a fried liver attack or something along those lines and now hans already makes a big commitment he plays the pawn to d3 right away generally white plays c3 and then d4 but then again c3 knight f6 he no longer plays d4 and opts to play a closed italian game uh where he defends the center hans plays d3 right away i mean it's just kind of like a move order thing it's just like a subtle detail White leaves the option on the table to potentially play knight c3 in the future. Also, white leaves the option on the table to develop the bishop before making other commitments. Uh, the truth is, for like 99.99% .99 of you watching, none of what I just said matters at all. You just want me to analyze the next move. Uh, chess is just one of these things. It's just a oh, yeah, small pawn move there. Yeah. So, <clears throat> knight f6. Castles. And now, d6. So, black is still developing before he is castling. Uh, White now has the option uh, to play like bishop g5 and play a very provocative line where you basically try to bait black into doing this. Then you play a5 to make sure b4 never happens. You can play bishop e6, queen e7, advance these pawns. Uh, but instead of that, you know, we have d6, we have c3. So, so Hans still plays the, the double pawn setup with d3, c3. He's either going to play for b4 or d4. He's definitely not going to play for b4 anymore because Shreyas plays a5. Now you'll notice that by the time spend of the players, it's a 90 minute game of chess. They gain 30 seconds every time they make a move. They know all of this. They are following top level games that have been played many, many times before. Now, <clears throat> I said my throat is bothering me a little bit. b4 is stopped, but the b5 square is quite vulnerable. And uh, the c6 knight will be under some pressure because if you get rid of that knight, that knight no longer supports the center and it enables one of white's major plans, which is to play the move d4. So we have rook e1, which is just a generally supportive move of the e4 pawn. Black finally castles. And now both sides make h pawn commitments to prevent the moves bishop g5 and bishop to g4 respect, uh, respect, I oh, re respectively, not respectfully. I mean, respectfully, they are also doing that, hopefully. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't know in Hans's case because the chess speaks for itself and I don't know if it's being respectful or not. Hans plays knight bd2. The other idea of rook e1, not just supporting the center, is that you put the knight on d2, f1, and g3. These are like all of the little intricate details of the Italian. If you really do want to uncover some mysteries of chess and challenge your brain, maneuvering in closed Italian positions will actually help with that. For most of us, in myself included, I don't find this type of maneuver maneuvering that interesting, um, but it definitely unlocks a whole component of your brain. You also can 
uh, explore positions that have been played in the Italian over hundreds of years. Like this opening has been getting played in the early 20th century, mid 20th century, now 21st century, right? So bishop e6 is a major decision. And now does white take? Does he damage black's pawns and open up his file here? Uh, or does he play this move bishop to b5? Basically surrendering the diagonal to black, but saying, I want to take the knight, and then I want to play for d4. And you can't get me out of there because you have played the move a5. This has been played many, many times. So if you look at the database, this position has been reached many times at top level, at, at medium level, at low level. Uh, by low level, I mean like 2300. Uh, it's been played a lot. And so here, the critical move by black is this very odd queen b8, which you can tell from Shreyas' time spent, like, they both memorize this, right? This is just top-level chess. They memorize to a point, then they play on their own. Queen b8 serves two purposes. Anticipate the opening of the b-file to have the queen there, and the second idea is actually to bring the queen this way, where it targets the f2 pawn, which white weakened with his move rookie 1, because white was so busy trying to make his plan work, and also a4, and then bringing the queen there to target the bishop. The move queen b8, queen a7, like, that's a ridiculous plan, but the second that it gets played once at top level chess, it just gets played all the time, because it's the silently agreed upon way at top level to equalize here for black, because at the end of the day, what are you trying to do with black and white? Try to get to an equal position first, and then you're trying to fight. Hans plays knight f1, instead of taking right away, black plays queen a7, and here... Hans plays the second most common move. So now we have followed the main line, right? In chess, you follow the main line. Now we're going to two branches. There's two choices here. The more common move by far is bishop to e3, about three to one, I think, according to the database. The second most common move is rook e2, which Hans has actually played before. Hans played this way in 2022 in August at the United States Chess Championship or the Singfield Cup. I can't recall. I think it's the US Championship, but it could be the Singfield Cup in St. Louis against Wesley So. So Hans has played like this before. He defends his pawn. This is the second most common move in the position. Now black plays this move a4, trying to play queen a5, and also advance here, softening up this position. Hans now plays knight to g3. Black plays queen a5. And already, uh, there are things that can happen in this position that have been played before. Hans himself, against Wesley in 2022, played queen c2. Then he played c4, blocking the bishop and fighting for the center. Then he played bishop d2. That game ultimately ended in a draw. The most common move in this position is right away playing knight h4. White has a majority of pieces on the king side. So if white is able to put a knight on f5, exerting pressure on g7 and h6, then potentially bring the queen over there, white has very serious, potent attacking chances because black's queen has sort of wandered off. Black is relying on the element of timeliness. He's going to time counterplay on this side of the board and, you know, done the right way, he's going to break in and, and white is actually going to have to play defense. White is not going to be able to attack because the entire kingdom is collapsing behind him. So that's all to say that after, uh, that after rook c2, none of, that, none, none, none of that even happens. So Hans played queen c2 against Wesley. The most common move is knight h4. Hans plays now a move that's been played three times ever. So it has been played. Somebody made a small improvement. But what is the idea, right? Like, this is kind of a new move to Shreyas, who, as you can see, spends about four minutes and responds. But it's a new move. It has been played before three times only. It's a new move for, you know, like for, for, for Hans, let's say. Uh, and uh, what's the point? Like, why did he go here? Why, why get your rook away from the king's position? Well, the idea is that white wants to create an attack, right? So we got to ask ourselves in any chess position, what do you want? What, what do the sides want? It's a closed position. Both sides still have eight pawns. A closed position can have certain openings. It does have an opening here. So Hans needs to make sure Shreyas doesn't bulldoze this side of the board. If he's able to lock that down, now the next thing Hans has to ask himself in any closed position is, does my opponent have a pawn break? Does my opponent have an opportunity to wreck the position with pawn play that could potentially jeopardize my, 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 my position or my control of squares or demand my attention to take away from my opportunity of attacking, like let's say by putting my knight here. What does Hans want? Potentially d4, or Hans wants an attack. Like that is what Hans is going to try to make happen. So black plays rook b8. Now it's a new game. Up until this point, we were in known territory. Some, some moves have been played before. It's officially the brand new first move. Shreyas commits both rooks to this side of the board and says, Hans, I don't think you have a sufficient attack on the king side. Hans plays c4. So the bishop is now blocked, right? This bishop 
he might try to put it there to defend and to pressure. Question is, can black land the move d5 successfully? We're going to find out. Shreyas plays queen b6, all right? Repositioning the queen to retarget this on f2. Uh, he had many options. I mean, he could have just played a waiting move as well, like king h7. He plays queen b6, which puts pressure here and on the f2 pawn, right? So queen e2. Han's patient. Guards everything patiently, right? Patiently waiting, just moving every piece just optimally. And he's going to try to maybe put that bishop there, maybe put the rook there. This idea, knight h4, knight f5, still very much on the cards. Monitoring this, monitoring this. Shreyas plays king h7. Another waiting move. You can kind of tell, black is just making slow, steady improvements, bringing his king a little bit to the defense. You might think, oh, he's bringing his king out. No, he's just bringing it to defend the pawns. Hans plays rook b1. It's very clear Hans is letting this go and potentially is going to prepare a b-pawn advance, but you really, that's, that's weird, that's counterintuitive, but maybe that's the right decision. Now his opponent plays queen a7. He's still very much waiting. Like, if Hans plays rook a1... And, and, and Black plays like King G8. Like, it, it's up to Hans now. He could say, I don't want to do anything. And Black is not in a position to call the shots. The second Black starts getting aggressive, he's going to lose a pawn. Right? So he can't really call the shots. So, but Hans plays Bishop D2. He's not looking to make a draw. He's trying to put his Bishop there. Defend. Slowly rotate. Right? You got to ask yourself as well in a close position, which of these pieces do I want to trade? Bishop B6. And now, sensing his opponent is going back, Hans lashes out. And that's a very important decision. It's an important decision because the existence of this pawn is a problem for black. He's got to take it. Why? Let's say he just waits. Hans now will just play a3. You can't move any of this. You move this pawn. I, and I look, at, look what happens to your bishop. And I got bad news. You move this pawn. This bishop is really going to die. It's just going to perish. It's a very tough spot. So now Shreyas has to play a b. Hans plays a b. Now, even though he's surrendered control of this file, there's no way in. White controls the infiltration spots. White has a brick wall. And now black plays c5. That is the top engine move, but that move makes me a little bit like, that makes me vomit, you know, a bit. Like, what about the bishop? Well, black is stopping d4. That's what black is doing. And maybe black has a pipe dream of getting the knight there, like here, 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 and then to d4. And maybe the bishop is just going to, maybe that's the idea. He's just going to trade the bishop, right? Well, his opponent locks the position. The attacking side benefits from a closed center. So while all these pieces are mummified, standing on this side of the board, Han says, knight h4. And he begins attacking operations. He plays knight to h4. Wants to put the knight on f5. Maybe wants to get in with his queen on the light squares or the dark squares. This rook is going to come here. Black is still looking for bishop a5, but he can't play it because all of a sudden he's going to lose. His, he's going to lose, right? You go here, there's this. So you can't do that. So knight h4, now Shreyas backs up. He's trying to reroute. He's looking to either go there, there, or there, there, there. Which is what I said. And now, as his opponent is retreating, Hans piles on the pressure while keeping the guard high. f4. One of the most effective ways to start an attack in chess is with your pawns. Bringing the pieces that you have the most of that are worth the least. Get the pawn in the game. f4. Black takes. If he doesn't take, it could be really bad. For example, let's say he continues with his plan. Black is suddenly gasping for air. <clears throat> the bishop is pushed back. F6. The pawns are now split. Queen H5. Hits this. Hits this. Game over. That's bad. So F4. Pawn takes F4. Hans takes back. But that trade just activated a whole new piece. What did that trade activate? Not the bishop. That trade activated the rooks. Now white is going to suddenly have the exact same position that he had, but with rooks involved. Black plays rook E8. At this point, you can sort of sense the entire opening black has played is intended to create counterplay over here, right? But all of a sudden, black is playing on white's demands. Look at black bringing the pieces back. The queenside attack was not successful. Rook to e8, and Hans plays a move here I don't get. He plays bishop d2. I think the idea is simply to put the bishop on that diagonal, but I would have played rook f1. But that's also why I'm commentating the game and he's playing it. So he reroutes the bishop to this diagonal, right? Now black plays c6. The idea of c6 is very simple. You just want to go here because what you're trying to do as black is create chaos. White is still trying to attack you over here. That's what I've been telling you since the beginning of this game. That's what white wants. That's why he built this wall in the center. 
Black wants to go here now. Black still can't get in, and Black has a terrible bishop on b6. So Hans plays knight f5. Low depth game review does not appreciate how good this move is. If I ran game review, it would call this an inaccuracy. But the idea is really brutal. This knight is being sent in to target everything, but also to die. What do, not like this. That's not what I mean. That knight is being sent in because black is going to create counterplay with d5. Now watch this. Hans plays bishop c3. This move is designed to force a move out of black. The move that Hans is trying to get Shreyas to play is d4. Why would he allow the pawn to march all the way into his territory? Because the dopamine of hitting the bishop and blocking it after this is gone. And black has the same problems he always did, which is what do I do with that barrier? What do I do with that barrier? How am I going to activate my pieces? I can't get my knight into the center now. A locked center position benefits the attacking side. Stockfish, of course, thinks black is better. Stockfish goes here activating this bishop on this diagonal and basically says black is better. But if you let Stockfish run high enough, not like that type of high, like high depth, the position's barely better for black, if at all. Hans now plays queen f3, looking to improve the pressure on the f-file. And remember a moment ago I told you this knight was sent in to die? This is what I meant. The knight is attacked. The knight has no forward mobility at all. It's got to go back. And you can argue, well, this pawn move weakened the dark squares. Nope. In this position, Hans Niemann sacrificed his knight. G4. That knight has been sent in to die. Whoa. And it's very simple. If you take, I take with my G pawn or my E pawn. This one looks more natural to me. You go back, play queen h5. This is not a threat, but that is, if bishop e5, I reroute, and I build my forces, and I get in. Bishop c1, rook g2. So, g4, and black plays bishop d8. He's trying to line up the bishops against his, Hans's knights, but it's just a matter of time. Right now, Hans is in a situation where he's playing hope chess. He's improving his position, but he's hoping his opponent is going to take. When you have a position like this, there's the first domino in the position that has to fall, and then the rest of them fall. But there, we can't find the first domino. We're hoping this is the first domino. But Shreyas Royal is a really good player, and he doesn't really like losing on purpose. So he's not going to take on f5. So Hans now has to reroute. It's like how a plane has to land, right? Sometimes you have to fly around the airport once. Knight g2. Hans is now coming back. He is going to return on the f4 square. Or he's going to transfer that knight out. Or he's going to attack the pawn on h6. Or he's going to play rook f1, get the bishop there, and play rook, rook 2 f2. Or bishop f4, bishop e5. And black just can't do anything. Black had that temporary dopamine rush of pushing Hans's pieces back, but he can't do anything. So if Hans waits, let's say Hans goes queen b8, bishop f4. Hans waits. She's played, I don't know, uh, queen a7. She's going to move back and forth. Soon white is going to build everything up, get his knight there. Right, play e5, right? bring a rook here, and Shreyas no longer feels comfortable. Right? He doesn't, it's, it's a matter of feeling a little bit uncomfortable here. And he basically is like, okay, he moved back. I don't believe him. I take his knight. G takes f5. And that is like getting on a roller coaster. G takes f5. And... Uh, here we go. Hans takes. Now, a moment ago, I showed you this position with the knight still involved. So the position that's here certainly has to be worse for white, right? I mean, black has a whole piece covering white's attack. Well, Hans Niemann down a full piece, a full piece that he sacrificed for one pawn in this position plays the cool, calm, Collected, king to h1. What's the point? The point is simple. In chess, one of the elements is time. And right now, white has the time. <clears throat> white has the time. 
to start construction on his own house. He has the time. He's going to play rook g1. The only way you reject a move like king to h1 is by looking around and going, which of these pieces can do damage to my position? And when five out of six of your opponent's pieces are on the back rank, and there's a gigantic brick wall in the center of the board, you very quickly realize nobody can do anything. And a lazy move like knight f6 will just immediately force the knight back. So king h1. And I think at this point, Shreyas realized, oh, I might be in trouble. So he played queen e7. He brought the queen back to the center, trying to defend himself. The computer still evaluates his position as slightly better. But here comes Hans Niemann, rook g1. But where's the attack? Like, okay, I can see on g7 we have a mate, right? Queen g4, queen g7. Like, I'm going to get the knight out of the way. But Shreyas plays bishop c7. He cuts this diagonal of axis. Hans plays queen h5. It's like we all know what Hans's pieces are going for. He's down a piece. He can't go to an endgame. Hans is going to play king h1, rook g1, queen h5, bring his knight, try to double his rooks, and try to go for a win. We all know what's about to happen. Can we stop it? Black plays bishop e5, centralizing the bishop. Hans brings the knight back to h4. The idea of knight to h4? It's not that the knight wants to go to g6. It's not that at all. It actually just wants to reroute to f3. And what it's doing on f3 is permanently pressuring the bishop. Also, potentially knight g5. So, for example, if black plays like rook b7, does nothing. I have sacrifices looming around the black king. So the knight goes back to f3. Black plays bishop to g7. Hans improves yet another one of his pieces, seizing control of this diagonal. And the other thing is this bishop now opened up the path for his rook to play rook to g2. Bishop f8. And Hans Niemann is winning. The idea of bishop f8 is to meet this move with getting the knight out, and that is winning as well. But bishop f8 was played in this position. And in this position, Hans Niemann sacrificed the rook! Rook takes g8. But what could possibly be the idea? Okay. Well, this is the idea. Now this is a check. And the idea is to remove the pawn from the defense of the king. So if you play king h8, bishop h6 is game over. But what if you play king h7? Well, you lose on the g-file. You cannot stop queen g8 mate. How insane is that? If bishop g7, queen g7, you have no other way to move your bishop. You can give a check. I go here, and you could sack your queen. That delays the inevitable. So rook takes g8, rook takes g2, bishop g7. And in this position, Hans Niemann decided to sacrifice the second rook! Rook takes g7, I can't fully yell because my throat hurts. Rook takes g7. Both rooks sacrificed to open up the king. The king is no longer with his knight and bishop. This bishop has been walled out for the entire game. The queen is hardly a defender of the king. And it's not that we go in with the queen now. We do it in a much more clean way. We take like this. The point is that the black king cannot go to g8 because then that and that is mate. So after bishop takes h6, the king goes to h7. And Hans Niemann plays here. Oops. He plays bishop g5, he takes the queen, and pawn to f6. It's the rook. That's mate. And if you go here, I can play e5, I can play here, I can play check, 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 take everything. So pawn to f6, and Shreyas Real resigned. That was a cool game. If we hit game review on it, whew, this game review says... Some believe the Greek gift sacrifice was named after Gioacchino Greco, who was Italian, even though it was called the Greek gift. That's very confusing. Speaking of Greek gift, this game had a few of those. Uh, I have game review set to one minute, so I'm going to you know, entertain you by flailing my arms on screen because this is funny and you guys probably, you know, you're probably very easily entertained. They say my average audience age is like 11, but it's not. It's like 20-something, which is... So... Three brilliancies. Knight g2, leaving the knight to die, which, by the way, I thought was even gangster to play g4. But, uh... 
<clears throat> a brilliant teach for getting rid of his rooks. Brilliant number two. Rook takes g8. Boink. And brilliant number three. Rook takes g7. That was a very sophisticated attacking game. And, you know, Hans did it in a way where he played a line he was very well familiar with, a line that has been played many times by many top players. And he played it himself, including Rook e2, but this time he went for this other line, Rook c2, which clearly he had worked on to stabilize the queen side first with moves like c4, queen e2, Rook b1, and this very interesting idea to play b4, which Stockfish thinks is an inaccuracy on its game review. But it's actually kind of hard to get through, right? Kind of hard to get through in this position. And then the way he just galloped to the other side of the board, used his pawn to open things up, transferred his knight in, and then baited his opponent in to lock the center. And I mean, G G4, knight G, this was some cool stuff. This was some cool stuff. Black should have not, probably not taken, but I'm not sure what he would have done if he didn't. I mean, Hans would have went for the exact same type of attack. So, Hans is currently, uh, I think he's three out of five in the tournament. He's uh, made four draws, and he won this very nice game. And he's tweeting after every round, so, you know. I wouldn't say that the chess is speaking for itself quite, quite yet, but with games like this, I'm, you know, I'm happy to say that perhaps it is, perhaps it might. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what, what more can you say? This was a really, really nice game, really sophisticated game, how to maneuver in a close position. I'm going to go rest my throat. Pause. Hope you all have a great December 5th. I'll see you in the next video. Get out of here.